I have just gotten word that there are rocks on our nature trail that do not belong here. Our job today is to try to figure out which rocks these are and try to figure out how they got here. Before we begin our investigation, we should probably start by reviewing some of the minerals we learned last year. Many of you may remember this mineral here and remember that this mineral is quartz. And I'll bet many of you remember that this mineral here is mica, which um, is easy to determine because it tends to break into very thin sheets. Some of you may also remember that this pinkish mineral here is feldspar. One interesting thing about feldspar is when it fractures, it often uh, fractures and forms a very smooth straight edge. Feldspar can also be white. These are pink examples here, but feldspar comes in a white version that is about as e uh, equally as common as the pink. And then we also looked at this uh, mineral here, which is called hornblende. Hornblende is actually a general term for a few different minerals, but they're all very, very dark in color and fairly dense. Quartz, mica, feldspar, and hornblend are all igneous minerals. That means they're formed from magma, which is kind of like a melted rock that's deep inside the Earth's crust, but often comes up to the Earth's surface in the form of volcanoes. If we take some quartz and mica, uh, take the chemicals that make up quartz, mica, horn blend and feldspar and mix them all together in the magma and let the magma cool it will form granite which is what you see here this is a mixture of these four minerals if the uh, feldspar happens to be a white feldspar rather than a pink feldspar like you see here it'll form a granite with white more white in it and no pink but these are both granites here so if we have some magma that is cooled into granite, and then we take this granite later, take this granite and bury it deep, deep under the earth, several miles down where it gets exposed to an amazing amount of heat and pressure, this rock here gets transformed, or what we say, it gets called metamorphose. It becomes a metamorphic rock, and it gets squeezed through all that heat and pressure into a new rock called schist. These are all pieces of schist here. If the schist has a lot of mica in it, it'll be real sparkly like this. If there's not much mica, it'll be not so sparkly, it'll be a little bit more dull. But in either case, it'll be fairly dark. Uh, you can still see individual pieces of mica and occasionally some grains of quartz and stuff in here, a lot of the dark horn blend. Um, it also tends to break into fairly thin sheets. All of these are fairly thin, and they're all fairly jagged points. So... The schist that we will see in our nature area, on the nature trail, will look like these examples here. So, now that we know what the rocks that belong here look like, let's see if we can spot any that don't belong here. These rocks here all look very similar to the schist that we saw earlier. Notice all the mica. Notice they're fairly thin and jagged. These two rocks here seem to have some pretty large quartz crystals. 
larger than what we saw on our granite. But if we look at this side, we see a lot of mica. It's very dark. So I'm not really sure. Notice this large rock here. This is schist. This was formed in this area. It belongs here. But look at this right in here. This looks very different, this huge hunk of quartz. Sometimes what can happen is this schist here that started out more or less as granite gets metamorphosed and then big cracks develop in it that more magma ends up filling later after the rock has already been subjected to heat and pressure. So as you can see deep inside this schist we have here we have some really big grains of quartz. That could explain some of those rocks we saw earlier. With so much variety in the size and the shape and the color of the schist that we see around here, I don't know how we're going to recognize any rocks that don't belong here. Wait a minute. What's this? Here's another one. This is coal. Coal wasn't formed around here. Coal was, this coal was probably formed hundreds of miles away from here. How did it get here? Well, it turns out about a hundred years ago, most people were burning coal for heat. Perhaps a bunch of coal that got brought here from far away got dumped here somehow or other. This was probably brought here by humans. So these were not formed here. These are examples of rocks that don't belong here. This is a slope here and there's a lot of erosion going on where the water has washed away the sand. But I still see an awful lot of schist type rocks here. But wait a minute. Look at this rock here. Look how round that is, how smooth that is. Notice you don't see any grains in it like you do in here. You don't see horn blend or anything. It's all kind of solid. That rock clearly does not belong here. Continuing along the trail, here's another one. It's very round and smooth, and it's all the same material. This one doesn't belong here either. But why would a human bring rocks like this over, bring them here, and then just leave them here? That doesn't make sense. Whoa! Here's another one that looks very, very different from the schist that we saw earlier on the trail. And another one over here doesn't make sense that some human would carry rocks like this here and just leave them. Turns out these rocks weren't brought here by humans, they were brought by glaciers. 20,000 years ago a sheet of ice a mile thick started advancing down, getting larger and larger and spreading down from northern Canada and covering this whole area here in ice and pushing all the rocks and soils and anything else that was in its way, pushing it forward on its way down here. And then as it started melting and retreating back up to northern Canada where it belongs, it dropped a lot of these rocks on the ground. Many of these rounded smooth rocks on our nature trail are what we call drop stones, rocks that were dropped here by glaciers as they were retreating back to Canada. It just so happens that we live in an area where a lot of rocks were deposited here by glaciers. Now you might not have so much schist around where you live like we do here, 
but chances are most of the rocks near where you live look pretty similar in one way or another and if you look carefully you may discover a few that just look like they don't belong here. They may be evidence of glaciers having dropped their rocks here 20,000 years ago.